Amen. Tim, Audrey, thank you for coming. For me, big, big honor, big deal that you guys are here. Yeah. I know you're very busy. Um, and I know you said last year that you're going to come out and, and really be honest with your journey. And, and it's a great, great privilege to have both of you here at the same time. So maybe we'll start with you, Tim. Um, as you know, I, I, I do do more because I've got this idea that I want to try and help the 31-year-old guy. I mean, the 31-year-old me, 15, 16 years ago, a lot of questions. Wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to invest money. I wanted to get, you know, become comfortable. I wanted to get married. I uh, wanted to get married. After that, how, what happens? Because there's so much flack about getting married, having children. A lot of life questions. So I thought you'd be quite interesting to talk to, um, having done all these things quite early on in your life. But I read that you said very publicly that you said starting is the hardest thing for, for, for most people, right? Yeah. How did you get started? What was your story? Um... Yeah, so first of all, thanks for, for having me. It's truly an honor. Um, you know, I, I guess I can only speak on my own experience, right? And I'm not like, um, I'm not, I won't consider myself such a, like a, oh, I, I don't have the vision of someone like an Elon Musk, right? Yeah. They can see, okay, I want to be in Mars in like 15 years or something. Yeah, and yeah. this is what I need to start with. Like, of, like you know, cost-effective rockets, reusable and like, you know, reusable, reusable rockets and stuff like that. And then build up all the way to that journey. Yeah. For me, it's that, I, I just basically look in the next few years like what I want to do yeah, yeah. and then and then and then I the most difficult part I guess is just knowing where to start right so for me it's just like one thing at a time okay incorporate company first and then if I need money okay and then find investors yeah. and uh, then, then what do we do you know like it's like step by step like, and I and I realised that once it's like a, once you get started right the the momentum kind of like forces you to do the next step and the next step and the next step, you know, um, before you know it, lah. So, and before you know it, you're you're actually like halfway in, and you look back and you're like, oh, okay, I didn't I didn't realize that you come this all far. the small things I did actually added up to this this thing for better or for worse. Sometimes yeah. it's worse, right? Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, sometimes it's worse, right? And and um, you know, and once you're there, it's like the only way to go is, is swimming, right? Because to swim forward, lah. Because if you yeah. if you stop swimming, then you just sink. Right? So. So yeah, for me lah, it's just you know I, I, I don't think, of, I don't think I'm that visionary in that respect lah. Yeah, but did yeah. you come from a family of entrepreneurs, or did you did you come from from a situation where you had to start a business because you you know you need money? I mean, what what was your motivating factor for for, for being an entrepreneur? Um, my my dad. My dad was an entrepreneur, but he's one thing he's very good at. He's very good at investing lah in oh, the stock market. So, so, so. so he dedicates all his time to that. Um, okay, so he's a she's an equity market guy. He's a share yeah, market yeah, guy. Yeah, equity market guy. So, um, and actually, I've, I've learned from him, I've learned from him lah. And and based on his experience, I've learned that that I can't expect to to make money from stock market if I'm really not full time on it. Compared to people who are really full time, like right, my dad, he's right. like so day he's, in and day he's, out. he's full on in the share market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't like passive and then okay, you know, you can you can, you can passively do and make some some return, but you're yeah. not gonna make like you know career you know, like career goals kind of returns. Lah. So, so uh, in my family so far, I'm the, apart from my uncle, I'm the only entrepreneur that I know. Lah. Um, and I didn't exactly start off with a, again, when I first started off, right, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to start this big company and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It was just, um, you know, I, it just, okay, I want to, when I started like nothing at first, it was just, I just want to start this thing because I think it, it it excites me, and my goal is just to earn enough salary that yeah. puts me in the same benchmark as my other friends who are out working on their own. In okay, PWC or <laughs> just to meet expectations, right? Yeah, yeah, just just like that, you know. So, yeah. yeah so I mean, I, I generally didn't think that. Far. But you knew you wanted to be your own boss, right? You knew you wanted to be because yeah. otherwise you're gonna just use a degree and and go to yeah. a job elsewhere. Actually, I, I've never felt like I needed to be my own boss. Okay. Yeah, and and to be honest, after I left like my previous company as well, right? I, I was thinking of what to do next, and I was totally open to, to finding previous a company job. Previous company was not nine. Yeah. yeah. After I left that, I was I was totally open to finding a new job and just working. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, for me, it's just it's not about being your own boss, but it's just about maybe who you work for. Yeah. If it's someone that I I admire, I I think I learn a lot from you know, yeah. and I, I don't mind working for that, but I I was stuck lah because, you know, I was stuck because. When I when I left, I had I realized that I don't have any particular skill sets that anyone would use in a 
particular career path. Yeah. You know, like all I know how to do was really like start companies. Yeah. Which which is actually quite a sad reality, you know, because yeah. I, I didn't know what I could do that could land me a job and give me a very steady income. Like whatever skill set I have built up or I'm comfortable doing is all in like taking risks like that where you don't even know whether it's gonna succeed or not. You know, so it it, it was kind of like a well, you know, whether you say it's sad or happy, or, I don't know, but just it's worked, so, well, it's worked out so far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It worked out so far. But you know, the thing about business is, it's never, it's not a sprint, right? Yeah, it's not where you are in two years from exactly. start. It's where exactly. you are in twenty years, right? That's right. So, and, and that has yet to play out, lah. Did you know him when you were back back then? I mean, you know, yeah. presumably you guys been together a long time, Audrey. Yeah, I met him. I met him after he started. After he started. After nothing. nothing. Yeah. Did you know each other back from Penang or? No. Um, we actually met in KL. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I heard of him when he first started Nafnang because a friend of mine, a close friend of mine was interning. Yeah, yeah. Was interning at Nafnang. And that time, he didn't have an office yet. <laughs> so he was working from home. And then my friend was going to his house. Yeah. So I was like, why is this guy so dodgy? Like, why is he working? <laughs> <laughs> and then why are you going to his house? <laughs> but it was legit, obviously. <laughs> Turned out legit. But, um, you know, so for, for people like me, right? Yeah. Uh, I've got a daughter, you know. we Eventually, you, you know when you're young and you've got these ideals about what love and what marriage is all about and mm-hmm. it's quite idealistic but then reality bites and then practically speaking you know you want to tell your daughter to marry a certain kind of guy or to to buy into a certain kind of guy but in those days obviously you don't know how he's going to tell us so what mm. for you when I mean, you came across him right Tim what, 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 what did you see what did you buy into at the time what? Oh, okay. Is is there such a thing? There was there was it anything as, as, as Well, as when when we met when we met we was we were still very young. I was twenty three. He was twenty four. Twenty three is really young. Yeah. So yeah. I just graduated and I just came back. And what I saw in him was that he was different from like the other other guys that I dated. So like for him at an age at twenty four, it was like he I thought that he really knew what he wanted to do is like okay. most most people like, I didn't know what I want to do yeah. at that age like, I didn't know what I was doing I like, just graduated I was just looking for a job you know it wasn't, but then for him I felt that like when I first met him he was I think he was like the most mature person my age that I that I knew at that point because it's like you like you, he, he knew what he was doing yeah. like, he was very sure of himself I felt that he was very sure of himself compared to to, to myself and compared to most of my friends can you remember what you were going through in those days? I mean, if she was 23, how, how old were you? Uh, I was 24. 24. 24. 24. And how, yeah. how was, what gave you the sureness in yourself? Um, because I guess when, when, when I started business at early stage, right? Like early because, age. I mean, 24, how many people know what they want to do, let alone yeah, yeah. be yeah, convinced he, about like the model? That's why his maturity at level at that time, right? Yeah. seemed like much older than, than, than like, you know, everyone else. Yeah. I mean, for uh, when I started with, Business at early age, right? Like I, I end up mixing a lot with like older people, yeah. whether they're my clients or other companies, or they're all older than me. Like literally ten years ahead of me, lah. So you know, so I talk to them a lot, and then I guess it's not something. This maturity is not something I was born with, but it's something that after hanging out with these people and yeah. constantly yeah. hearing their thoughts and advice and everything, um, that's when I mean I've I kind of like it, it changed my thinking, lah. So yeah. then the courage to do it, right? The, because a lot of people dream about being their own boss. Almost everybody, right? Mm. I'd say 99% of people want to be in charge of their own life. Yeah. But they don't have the courage, they don't have the balls to come out and hand in the resignation at the, take the risk, you know, um, suffer the prospect of having no salary for God knows when, mm. right? How to pay their staff, etc. Mm. How, how did you do it? Uh, I, I can't give myself credit for, right. for, for taking that risk. To be honest, I'm not me. I mean, many other entrepreneurs, yes, but yeah. for me, it's because I mean, my my family is, is fairly, um, fairly well to do, upper middle class, right? Okay. So, so they, I I've always had that safety net, right? Anyway, you know, so my dad's like, I will try, I will try. It's not like I had to go and give money to my dad every month, yeah. or, or you know, if I fail, I'm out on the street, correct, you know, that correct, kind of thing. Correct. So, um, to be honest, really honest, like, um, credit to many entrepreneurs who have to take that risk, but, um, I I didn't have. But then, you know, yeah, equally, yeah. right? Equally, from my background, I've come from, yeah. not, not similar, but, yeah. you know, plus, plus yeah. minus, or me, my minus two or three levels. Yeah. And a lot of people who come from privileged backgrounds, they don't, they're even less um, willing to take a risk than most other people, right? Yeah. They're willing to just say, hey, you know, I'm going to inherit my dad's money. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to ride on the coattails of his okayness mm-hmm. and just have a comfortable life, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I can think of maybe other people like like Tony Fernandez. Mm. I think his parents are quite wealthy. His mum was dad's a doctor or something. Then he was in public school in England, mm. but he took a risk and he made it happen, right? Mm. So not many people have the balls to go and do it. Mm. Yeah. So that makes you kind of like, in fact, yeah. it makes both of you a bit of an outlier, right? Yeah, I, I guess in some way, yes. Um, in, in balls of me, like, okay, still willing to take the shame of failure that comes with it, you know? Yeah, but that's the only thing. Asian yeah. people are like shit scared. Yeah. Of being dumb the failure, right? Yeah. Wow, can eat Johnny Cone again, then yeah. you know? And then bo wow, be your yeah. age, you know what I mean? That that kind of failure, right? Yeah. And uh, I mean in that in that respect, lah. But um, but I guess all I'm trying to say is that um, I, I think I've had it much easier. Um, yeah. Because of my parents, uh. And then nothing, right? Because yeah. nothing at the time. You're basically a blogger's yeah. network, yeah. right? And then you take care of the interests. Mm. You knew, you knew the problems that you were facing, they were not big enough, they had no voice, there was no visibility. So it's kind of like an association, kind of like a, a mm. union, right? Mm. You, you put them all together with the combined traffic and combined influence, mm. then you monetize them for them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Um, it worked for a while, <coughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked but for but the difficulties were what? Managing people and all the idiosyncrasies of these qu quite, quite egoistic people, <laughs> right? Um. Hmm. I think that they. I mean, if I look back, right? Yeah. Okay, if, if I look back, I think Instagram changed it, changed everything. Yeah. Right? So before, right? I mean, okay, there are many, many reasons. There are ma many macro and micro reasons, but one of the reasons is because in the past, when we had bloggers and everything, right? There will be X number of bloggers who are popular, lah, right? And and they dominate everything, you know. And then the rest of them are just <coughs> making up numbers. Yeah, because you know the rest of them are just smaller and make weight, lah. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the spend goes to the, the top top tier yeah. ones, right? Yeah. And they get most of the spend, and and so we we dominated that that top tier ones, and we also we also went for the mid and smaller tiers, lah, right? But we dominated the top tier ones. So so and you know we had like talent agreements with them. So it's just like a talent agency. Right where, it's right. it's as if you are Astro, and yeah, all the it's, it's, actors it's, actually, uh, it's like what they're doing now with I can't remember the company, but it's like what they're doing now with yeah. their um, influencers, yeah, right? Yeah, with influencers, right? Now, what happened <coughs> when when Instagram Instagram came along is that the number of people with influence on in terms of number of followers like ballooned, so that that top tier people no longer had the uh, so monopoly or yeah. oligopoly of influence you know what I mean because it became like everyone yeah mm -hmm. and also it became diluted because then you've also had people who you know they they have a lot of followers on Instagram but you know they they don't really convert stuff yeah if they share your, your podcasting it doesn't lead to views or yeah. if you if you share a product it doesn't lead to you know things like that lah. so so that's when it became more difficult to manage because the, the the market became a lot more saturated but at the same time um, there was more demand lah. Because it became more accepted, you know, to, to buy into influencers and all that. La. So, um, I mean, there are very, very many, many reasons uh, of how, how the market has overall changed. Uh. Yeah, so yeah. obviously the, 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 the whole blogger sphere has changed. Mm. And people who blog now, they don't necessarily get the same influencers like mm. Instagram. Yeah, but they don't necessarily convert. Yeah, yeah. I see your Instagram page. I'm, I can't remember, I think you triple the number of subscribers yeah, he yeah. has, right? Four times. <laughs> four, four times, right? <laughs> Um, it's it's crazy yeah. and and I see your your feed. I mean, yeah. obviously I'm a parent, but um, it's all about kids and the home yeah. life and mm. children. And you're quite similar, right? Yeah. And I also notice that you're doing sponsorships as well. I see yeah, some yeah. Hennessy in there yeah, as well, yeah. some To Me in there as well. Yeah. It's interesting. It's it's really interesting. So you've yeah. come, so you you've been able to spot the trends. And I know some bloggers who who still don't who still blog and that's all they do. They they're convinced it, it's the lot. That you can't, right? Uh, it it's not it's not about whether they're convinced or not. I think like blog. Blocks is a is a it's like a written word. Yeah. Whereas Instagram is very visual. Yeah. So I think it's where your strength lies as well. Some some bloggers are very good at writing, but I mean the environment has changed so much that a lot of people don't want to read anymore. Yeah. So I mean I went to your blog four feet nine dot com or something, right? Yeah. I think your last post was something last year, December yeah. or something. Uh, yeah. No lah, last a uh, few maybe one two weeks ago. Ah, sorry, one two weeks ago, yeah. but, but clearly not the like yeah. a twice a day uh, thing yeah. that some so, people so do, a right? Lot, yeah, so a lot of people who who are very good at writing, they may not be able to convert when they like now the popular mediums are Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. Where it's, it's very visual, it's very video and very photo. 
focus so they might be very good at writing but they might not present well so I think that that also you know it's a change like it's a change in medium that that causes that these these bloggers some of these bloggers to not be able to progress into the next phase correct, of correct. social because media because they're not yeah. evolving fast enough yeah yeah like even even like I started as a blogger but recently I think last week I did a poll on Instagram um, asking whether people <laughs> preferred uh, blogs blogging or vlogging so I, vlogging, I also make yeah. video video content on YouTube that's right, that's yeah right. And then like I think eighty percent of them said that they prefer videos. Then when Shooting. I asked why, yeah, wow. when I asked why, they said that they they said that it's easier to watch videos compared to read blogs. But to me, I'm a very reading. I'm a very yeah, like yeah. more of us are like reading people. Reading kinds, yeah. So like I would like if there's a like we're talking like if there's an article or a video, I would read the article over watch watch the video. But yeah, the world has changed. Like everyone. It looks like everyone else prefers videos. Yeah, I mean, I never used to do yeah. podcasts. I never used to do videos. <laughs> but now you can just let it play in the background. Yeah, yeah right? that's and what they do. They just, just play in the background. So when they're, when they're doing their own yeah. work or whatever, yeah. they just let it play. Yeah. yeah. So so when, when you started off, then you kind of like spotted the trend and then you you, ba- you basically try to... You did something quite disruptive in the sense that you, you did what not many people saw or, or, or had the balls to do in, in terms of unifying them under one mm-hmm. one agency. Mm-hmm. So now you've left that behind. Mm-hmm. How how do you see like the internet evolving? Because cause in a way with colony and co-working spaces, you've left it behind. And you've gone and done something almost completely different. Mm-hmm. But do, do, you, do you see, how, how do you see the whole internet the space? Internet space yeah, yeah, yeah. Evolving, especially Asia, because Asia, Asia can sometimes evolve very differently from America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, I think it's, it's really significantly changed uh, in, in a sense where, um, for example, blogs used to be a space where people would would do what they do with Facebook today. Like, oh, I had, I had a bad day today, yeah. this is my day. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it used to be like that, right? So then after, and and that was good and it's bad because it's, it's not the great quality content, right? But thanks to Twitter, Facebook, all these platforms, people moved all the very personal contents onto those platforms and then you're stuck um, what's remaining is the is the more s- serious content writers whether they write about food or politics or whatever la, any, anything like that la. and and the good thing that the Facebook and Twitter and all that did was that it it provides it provided a, a distribution stream for good content so like the I mean my 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 personal blog. I mean, I've I've stopped writing recently because I'm f- quite busy, la. But you know, in the past few years, have, I've had much more traffic, right, than I've ever had in my first five yeah. to seven eight years. You know, because because of these platforms. You know, like if you write a good article, you get shared a lot and you get a yeah. lot of traffic. At one point, yeah. I remember that in I think a couple of years ago, my blog had like something like a million. A million, one point three million visitors in a year, or something like that. You're kidding? Yeah, yeah, it's unique crazy. visitors. Yeah, yeah, unique visitors, unique, unique visitors. Yeah. It's 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 quite nuts. So, um, so did they come and read you because of who you were, or because they liked the content and they didn't know who you were in the first place? There, there is a, a segment of people who who know who I am, right? But yeah. I think the large. I mean, you know, and and the large, and 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 these people have a habit maybe of checking it every now and then. Yeah. But the large proportion of it, I mean, look, a million people don't follow me on any platform whatsoever yeah. Yeah. right not even half a million not even 200,000 you know not even 100k yeah. so a lot of them they, they just see good content and then they just go to it like, you know similar to this podcast like, I mean like one day if you hit something yeah. and it's it really you know you'd be surprised like, it, will, it could be listened like a, a million times but then and but then you can do the next article or the next podcast yeah. and you'll be back to like a thousand views they kind of this thing. is crazy right it's yeah. crazy a friend of mine has just joined Twitter and I think he, well, he's a photographer yeah. David Lowe right he used to work for Reuters he went on the bridge Penang Bridge and yeah. he went and took the photographs of the, when they fished the, the poor guy out yeah. on the, on yeah. the water oh. right something like 300,000 <laughs> yeah. v- views and, and like 5,000 shares or something then the next week it just went back down to 50 again it's, <laughs> it's, cra- it's crazy yeah. and he's been on Twitter like two months right it's crazy yeah but um, it's the name of the game. So, so, um, so for, for, for people like you, right, uh, who, who are on social media, um, mo- monetizing it, right, for people who do want to become social media guys, and how, how, what, what are the ways for, what, because what, we know sponsorships are kind of like, and, and product placement and endorsements mm. are, are how you do it now. Mm. What about in future? Is there like a, is, it like, is there like a way that it's evolving or, you know, um, I don't know, right? 
people pay for postings, but I don't know. Will that? I, it seems to me that it's it's crazy. It's crazy money now that Ronaldo can get like, I don't know, half a million euros or something for one yeah. posting. It's crazy. Can't last forever, right? Yeah, but Ronaldo is like the zero point zero 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 one percent. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean, I don't mm. think. I, I'm sure <coughs> that there is money in it, but. I don't know. I don't know for sure how much there is, yeah. and I don't know for sure out of the all the mainstream influencers out there, how many are actually making money. So why then? Why why then do they persist with it? Because at guess some point the, in time, yeah, for the hope that you will make money, or is for the it's so for the for, for the you hundred twenty thousand or. Subscribers on Instagram. I don't know how many viewers. Hundred thirty thousand. YouTube. YouTube. How many? Yeah. YouTube. Not that many. YouTube. Um. Because I've not been consistent. So YouTube now. I think I've maybe got twelve thousand. And you're four feet nine on YouTube as well. Yeah, I'm also four feet nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool name, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of people. They, they we do get sponsorships, but it, it just depends sponsorships in terms of what like whether there's monetary compensation, yeah, yeah. or whether it's just um, sponsorship in the form of products. Yeah. 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 So then, why do why do you do it? Is it is it because is it because it furthers the business as well? I mean, the, you get to promote colony, you get to promote your own, you know, line. Whatever. Yeah, I think I think part of it is branding, yeah. personal branding, like yeah. as a, a your brand as an influencer that yeah. you are seen associated with, like all these, um, you know, top brands, and and hopefully that will that will bring in the money next time. Yeah, but a lot of. A lot of the influencers nowadays, a lot of them are on Instagram, especially are, yeah. are girls, are predominantly yeah. very female. A lot of them, I think, they're also doing it for, for the, the fame, the okay. the glamour. Because they want to be, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's very glamorous to be seen. Oh, you know, and I've also read this one article, recently about influencers who fake it. So yeah, they, they don't they, really own the yeah, they, they don't really own the boat, right? No, no. So <laughs> they, they they take pictures and then they hashtag or they tag the brands, and it looks like it's a product, like it's a like curated shot, like it's like a sponsored shot. Yeah. But actually, the brands are not working with them. They just they're just making it look like they're working with these brands, hoping that other brands will catch on and think that oh, you know, you must have something that that's why brand X is working with you. So yeah. let me work with you. So, so so yeah. It's so it's very job, yeah because right now it's early days for Instagram and monetizing the the, the traffic right. I don't think it can last forever. I, I I seriously don't. But I just don't I don't know where it's going to go, and I don't know whether Asia will go in a different direction from you know America or, or Europe. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the thing about influencers, right? Yeah. And and I mean this, in our experience lah, is um, if you talk to people who own brands. And you've used influencers, right? You 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 find some of them saying, like it just doesn't work. Bloody mm. waste of time, right? It just doesn't work. Mm. You, yeah. you, this guy with half a million followers, post a picture of a product, and and it converted to nothing, you know. And and actually, that's true, one. That that's also true because because it's not just about the number of the influencers, right? But it's why is someone popular, right? And it, it goes to the same that it, the 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 someone's popular, the power of a person's influence, right? It depends very much on the bond you have with that person, right? And it goes back to very, very traditional um, reasons, right? So why are people popular today, right? People are popular, number one, they, they have, um, they, they do, they're, they're known for their work. People follow them because they love their work. It could be footballer, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. It could be, yeah. if you could, it could be um, because you're JK Rowling or yeah. Yeah. because you, you know, you could be actors, sports stars, like all these kind of things, you're known for your work, uh. Right or number two, you're known because uh, people follow you because they really really resonate with you or think that you you kind of like really represent them lah yeah. right down a down a particular group of people. So if you if people if you have a lot of followers on Instagram maybe because you're just a good looking guy or a pretty girl or something like that right, but there's no other reason to follow you apart yeah. from that very super superficial thing yeah. that is interchangeable with any other good looking guy or pretty girl out there. Yeah. Then chances are you you don't you're not that effective in terms of influence yeah. if you post a product people will be like oh, okay fine next yeah, yeah, exactly. you know? but if people follow you because they really love your work <laughs> if Cristiano Ronaldo posts like you know uh, a, a new like football boot that he thinks is like damn power damn like, right sales go to the roof it goes, it goes mm. nuts you mm. know what I mean so right. so that's one thing I've learned I've, I've learned that because um, we've used many influencers who are huge like, like millions of followers and it doesn't yeah. it doesn't work now. it doesn't translate it doesn't translate yeah. but does it does it work right do influencers work hell yeah 
Like if you look at uh, Fire Festival, right? Purely influencers. Sure, that thing is crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. It's crazy. Or yeah, you look we just it, watched the documentary recently. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or even locally, like yeah, there's Vivi Yusuf. She's yeah, she's mad as well. Entirely as build as a business well. on that, and for us in a smaller aspect, Colony lah, right? It's because uh, Colony has done well because because we've been you know quite 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 uh, quite um, uh, um, um, obvious, right? Yeah, but visible mm-hmm. on, on on social media. Yeah, quite visible on social media. And some of the pictures you guys take incredible, man. Right? It's really beautiful. I mean, I think yeah. you're you're doing design for them, right? Mm. For Colony, mm. amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah, what's Parisian apartment? <laughs> Pretty damn cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty damn cool. Yeah, so. So it, it kind of really depends on, yeah, on that lah, you know. And in the scale of influencers, we we're not really high in follower count or anything like that, you know. Yeah. When when I won't say we're not, okay, we're not tiny. Neither are we large by any extent now. Yeah. And um. You know, and it, and we do get a lot of sponsorships, right? But is it paid or is it just product? Ah, uh, paid. M- most of it's paid. Yeah. Um. Uh, we always disclose if it's. Paid, right? right? So um, it's paid, and uh, sometimes it's like. But it's not as if you need the money. I mean, that's not your sole income, right? You, you. I, yeah, I think yeah. for me, the message is that you use social media to get a profile mm-hmm. and to be able to f- frequently and regularly promote what you do at Colony or yeah, what yeah. other whatever other business that you've got, whether it's a yeah. clothing line or whatever, right? Yeah. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Mm. I mean, when when we get a job, we like an like an offer, right? We the first thing we look at is like, do I like this product? Yeah. Uh, do I so can, can it work with you as a press a profile? Right? Yeah. Do I will I use it? If not, then I don't because yeah. then it's just it just betrays betrays the trust of everyone, right? Yeah. So like I drink Hennessy, I love Hennessy actually. Yeah. I, you know, like I, you know, I pet drink by the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do love I do love Hennessy like, Beyond beyond just their, I mean, you know, the drink itself, but you yeah. know the the experiences that they they curate yeah. in the events are all yeah, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, or to me, uh, all these kind of things, I I, re- I really really. Like love them as brands, yeah, yeah. Um, and the reason why we get so many, it's not really because we, we're big. Oh, for me, at least personally, it's because I, I come somehow fall into a particular niche, of an influencer slash entrepreneur. Yeah. Right. That's right. And, and, and that's th- pretty rare, isn't it? Right? Yeah. And and there are not many in in that niche that have, x amount of followers, but you know, I know as entrepreneurs and slash influencer for the urban English market in Malaysia. And was of a certain age as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It. It, that's the only that's the real only reason it's not because I'm particularly popular or anything like that you know that's not the case I just I just somehow and this is not planned this is just by so chance so they just contact you and say hey we love what you're doing on, on Instagram or whatever and yeah, can, yeah. can you can, can you work with me on this particular yeah, product yeah. and then you say yes or no yeah. well, what kind of numbers are we doing? Is, is it significant or is it just like single digit thousands is, um, you know? it depends on depends on the campaign depends on what's involved like what, yeah. what okay so there's a duration to it lah um, not duration, but the number of posts, what they what they want to do, whether yeah. they want to shoot a video, just yeah. take a photo. Yeah, yeah. It depends. Yeah. It depends yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, it really it really depends on like what the the, the job is like, You know, yeah. and um, yeah. But I mean, influencers can, can they can earn anywhere from a small amount of money to I think there's uh, I know there's some who maybe earn uh, okay in Malaysia a decent sized influencer you can earn. Uh, one to two hundred k, uh, a year. A year. A year. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. And you still have to pay tax on that. Yeah. So, so you have to pay tax on that. Yeah. By the way, they they actually um they're you gotta pay tax anyway, right? Yeah. 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 You, yeah, you gotta yeah. Yeah. declare it and all that because yeah. it's the yeah. checks issued and yeah. all that, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. some people think that almost enough to make you quit your full time job, but not quite. Yeah. 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 Right. But a lot of people. A lot of people do it full time. Yeah. 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 I guess to be young is okay. Then you Yeah. If you don't have a commitment, then yeah, it's okay. But like just now, what you were saying. Um, like for me, for influencer being an influencer was my full time job before before Colony started. because yeah. I was I left my I was in advertising before that, and then yeah. I left. Yeah. So then I was then we we had kids and all that. So I was like a mom, and then like full time influencer. So yeah, that so that one, like yeah, yeah I was yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was like like my in a way it was my full time job, and I was paying taxes for it. But like, why is it? Um, it's true lah that that we that being an influencer, it cannot be cannot be just that like mm. like like I think the, the the power of being an influencer is not really the money but the actual influence that you have the reach. to to yeah. use it to to support whatever else you want to do like, like for like you know how, how yeah. we like colony our influence helped with colony definitely mm. for and sure, for whatever for we sure, do in the future sure. yeah yeah and to be honest right it, it's it's not that enviable a position because it doesn't last 
Yeah, like it, and, and people mm. are so fickle, right? Mm. So Today, you better build yes, some. If you have influence, you better build something. Yeah, yeah, to, and make it yeah. And, and, and monetize and, and, it first. Yeah, and yeah. then and then bring your influence to, to push it up. Yeah. and after you run with it. Yeah, like yeah. Cannot rely you on don't influence. know how yeah. many fickle people are. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in terms of who they follow. And and when we look at it, right? Okay, for the past since like we st- we first became bloggers, like maybe ten more than ten years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, we have seen so many who are very popular that that have you know become not popular and yeah. new ones that have come in yeah. and supersede, right? And I mean, it's very surprising. Even when I have conversations with her, I always ask her. I always tell her, like, look, it's just a matter of time before we're we're really, really irrelevant. Yeah. It's just that for sure, for sure, no question, no question. Yeah, and and to be honest, right, two years ago that was happening already to me. You know, like uh, because of Nang and everything, it was like okay, everyone knows Nang or that. You know, so it's it's kind of done. You know, but it's just that in the, since Colony started, there's a lot of PR about Colony, and you know the you know people so then it's come people up see again. the work, so it's come up again. Yeah. But even then, every time if it's not going up, it's coming down. You you're never it's such stagnant. A roller coaster, man. Yeah. So, it, to to have a whole livelihood on it is pretty scary, lah. You yeah. know, like I, I, I wouldn't do it, lah. You know. It's but you know, explain something to me, right? Because I'm I'm like maybe one generation older than you, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you? seriously, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And for 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 people in my generation, we, we don't come from like that sharing um, uh, um yeah. mindset. Yeah. For us, like, are you why why you want to let people know about yeah. you know your kids and yeah. um, and share your life? It, for us, yeah. it's like privacy is you know. Yeah, yeah. But so explain that that how can things change so much in one generation that we can go from from black to white? I don't know, cause yeah. cause uh, yeah, we're we're pretty things. scared of of like being so open with our lives and and afra- afraid of the reprisals. You know what I mean? So actually because once you open up, it's like, and the comment section is is can be pretty scary. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So actually, um, I have a friend who's working in in um in the government like She's in the education ministry right now. <laughs> so you know the 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 shit that the <laughs> Masli right? has been Masli getting, right? Yeah. yeah. So but but she like, cause she she works directly with him, so she knows she believes in him lah. She 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 says that he, she believes that he has good ideas. It's just that his PR is not very strong. So that's why he, he, he gets all this shit from the media and all that. Yeah. So then she, um, I think a few months back, she wrote a Facebook post about like what they are really going through. And she got shit for it. No, so she got a lot of support, but she also got some shit for it. Some hate. Right? Yeah, but, but there was another friend who, who is older, uh, David actually. So mm. David actually commented, he's, he's about probably about your age, 40 something. Yeah, yeah. And he also used to work in politics for for some time before this. Yeah, he's yeah. not in. He's not there anymore, yeah. Then he he was he he said like, oh, you know, I would I would tell her that, like you are you are because you are in government right now. Like you shouldn't be. This is not something that you be, you should be sharing. But she was sharing positive things, to positive things about about the minister. Yeah. And like for me personally, I felt that like it was very good. Like, I felt that I felt I felt that he needed the good PR. And but to somebody from who's like 10 years older, yeah. they see it as a bad thing. Uh, they see it as like, oh, you yeah. know, you sh- you're in this yeah. position, you shouldn't be sharing anything. It will, it will affect you in in future, like your future, your jobs or whatever. But to me, it's like, no, I see it as a totally good thing. So I think that's the disparity. Yeah, crazy, yeah. right? I, yeah. I, can't, I can't figure it out because yeah. at my age, and I know, I know the media, because I'm from the media industry, and, and things are changing so fast. Forget newspapers, you know, for, for, forget blogging. Even TV stations and TV programs, forget it, Astro is dying, right? Pay, pay TV is dying. Um, it's, it's changing so fast. It's changing faster than any other industry I know. Mm. Um, and to me, I, I know the importance of sharing and I know the importance of social media. But scared, lah, you know? And like, mm. wow, it's moving too fast and you don't want to be too open and transparent in their lives. Mm. But, you, but people, like, people like you and even one generation below. Yeah, I, think so, I, I mean, think I, I, I have friends with children 11 years old. The kids got his own YouTube channel. He's 11 years old, it's Chris yeah, yeah, a lot of kids, like primary school kids, they, they say that they, their ambition is to be like a YouTuber. A YouTuber, right? Yeah, yeah. To un- unbox, <laughs> unbox toys. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, unbox toys. Like my, my daughter watches like Sis and Bro Bro and Sis or something. They, they put a slime, it's crazy. <laughs> and the, <laughs> their family's got like 3 million subscribers or something. It's like mad, it's mad shit going on, man. Yeah. So, so how, okay, so as parents, right? How, how do you? Fighter and Penny, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, 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 how how do you? You can take that one. <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're not at that age yet. Um, they they are still they they watch YouTube. Yeah. And yeah, they watch like, they watch un- unboxing videos like you know those unboxing toys, videos, and they watch a lot of like role play videos. So basically, it's it's basically children playing with like dolls. 
so so it's like watching children role play when when they when they play pretend with their dolls or whatever then they reenact like a whole whole scenario like a whole storyline so they yeah. they watch a lot of that but they are not we I haven't felt the need to we haven't felt the need to need to, like, like we restrict their their, you, their you con- TV screen you give time them, uh, their, their own phone and you give them iPad 24/7 we give we, we they they have our iPads they use our old iPads but we restrict There's it no restriction to, but, on got restriction got restriction so only during certain times certain time of the day but every day they get lah Ah, uh, every day they get. Okay. But they get maybe like an hour, half an hour, an hour, okay. and then, yeah. Yeah, because I also try to figure out right. Every but every parent, yeah. you don't, if you don't let them use any of it, they get left behind. If they use too much of it, God knows what they're yeah, gonna do with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and I think we just need to start looking at like you know parental controls, like what they can tap on and what they cannot tap on. So yeah. far, they are quite safe because they don't really know how to read yet. And if they're watching like toy videos or or like children's videos, then the YouTube recommends. Also, children, you know, like related lah. It's not too bad yet lah. Yeah. But eventually, you will have to start looking lor. Yeah. I think YouTube has a child-friendly app, right? YouTube kids, YouTube kids, YouTube kids, yeah, yeah YouTube kids. <laughs> yeah, but because my iPad is too old, so it cannot download. <laughs> 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 so I'm still using normal one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then and then and then yeah, recently fighters been asking for a phone. How old is your kid? Six kids. this year. Six this year. See, okay, okay, so what you do, right? He phone? Said, no phone? iPad? No iPad? Eventually we have to give him a phone But how When old? he starts going Yeah so he asked for it for 10 years old Then I said we will see I haven't decided yet Yeah Even but, 10 but, I think is too young Yeah but I think now there's a lot of 10 year olds they, Like they have it Maybe it's not a smartphone Maybe it's a phone that's just la. Yeah just to Just to call your mom Like when you're tuition class or whatever So who's more active? Is it you or you? Or, or both Or both totally hands on? For what? With the, the kids, kids? Ah. I'm at home more lah, so yeah, so yeah. yeah, and I I take the kids to school. So the assumption so is because the business is so busy, you you have to you, you know you don't get to spend as much time with your kids as as you, as 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 you know, mm. the wife. <coughs> well, you know, many many years ago, this guy, you know, Mister Kukakun Nestle. Yeah. He's been Nestle, right? Yeah, yeah. So I remember he, about ten years ago, he told me he told me one thing. He always said, Tim, you know, when you see people who who are successful have a lot of money never never envy because there's always a price to pay yeah to get for that. sure for sure you no know? question and they've all paid that price they deserve it you know and what, what you just mentioned time time away i mean as when we're, when we're bachelors and we don't have kids you know t- time is time is cheap you can give all the time to the business no problem no right problem. now with family time is it's not cheap it's not cheap anymore you know so every every day it's uh it's it's a mental calculation of what is the price I'm willing to pay la. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I make that call. Yeah. So for for you right now, m- most of the time you still want the business. <coughs> yeah, but I I do I do um okay so for me right like they're not no they're no fixed hours that I work I like, kind of work all the time right but yeah. but um I I do try to make it back between five to seven p.m. because. My kids go to bed which at 7 p.m. Which is damn early anyway, right? For, yeah. most, days, for most people. Yeah, so 5 7 p.m., then I, I'll come back, see the kids, then I have dinner, then after that I work. I, I'll continue my work at night, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so I have that, a bit of flexibility in that, on that front. Uh. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we're all trying to find... I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to find a, a right balance. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's always a, a price to pay. Like, for him, the price <coughs> that he has to pay is he has less time with the kids. But on the other hand, and like I, ha- I have a lot of time with the kids and it's, yeah. it's my choice also it's what I choose yeah. to but at the same time I don't have something like I'm helping with Colony like we work on Colony together but I eventually I want to start something on my own and I don't have the luxury to do that yet la. yeah. because I, I was like yeah, older, like maybe more time <laughs> yeah right? but then like right now they're still very young I still feel like yeah, I still want to be there around them yeah. so there's, yeah. there's a choice I make and you grow up that fast man yeah yeah, no. yeah. The next time they they they, they might not want to come out with us anymore. Yeah. They might want to have hang out with their own friends. Yeah. We're not cool anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's a massive sacrifice. I remember about two three years ago, I went for like a, it's, well, it's run by Christian camp, but mm. actually the camp itself is not. It's it's called um, uh, father son camp, right? Mm. One night, I don't know if you guys heard of it, right? And the point, the, the founder pointed out that between the age of uh, seven and thirteen, the child is the most receptive to ideologies and, and, and ways of thinking and it shapes the child 
for the rest of their lives. So what they develop between the age of 7 and 13 stays with them for the rest of their lives and makes them who they are in adulthood. Mm. Unfortunately, it also coincides with the time in their father's career or business life that they're most away from the children. Mm. So right when the child is most receptive, the, the typically the father is away most of the time, mm. developing his business or um, getting ahead on the corporate ladder. Yeah. And like, it's a worldwide thing. Most fathers around the world are suffering from that. So as they get older, the child is more distant from them. And yeah, there's all kinds of like, you know, ramifications. Um, most parents, they're dealing with it. But, but luckily, you know, in your case, I guess, you have that flexibility to come back and spend more time with them. Yeah. But mm. it's, it's, it's a huge thing. It's a really huge thing. So, I mean, what, what is your advice, you know, to, 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 to the children or, or would-be fathers out there? What are your pearls of wisdom, you know, having gone through, uh, you know, all your troubles and challenges and stresses and all that? What would you tell the young father? Mm. The young father who's also an entrepreneur. And there's quite a lot of them out there. <laughs> so <right>? very niche. <laughs> <laughs> I would say many actually. In now, yeah, yeah, maybe now. Many no. starting a business and mm. I mean I, I don't I don't typically give advice. Yeah. Because I always find advice is um, advice is, is judgmental. It assumes that I know more than whoever is listening to yeah. advice, right? So yeah. uh, instead what I do is But how I would you change? If would you if you could change yeah. or, or alter your your yeah. approach, how would you change it? Um Okay, so what I do is that I, I, I share experience. Yeah. I, I share experience, my, how I cope with it. La. And I don't know, my, my way of doing it is just, you know, it's like I, I, I'm driving, but I constantly look at the rear view mirror to just check. Yeah. You know, so every time I, I, I find myself, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working, but I'll, I'll check myself, like, okay, am I spending too much time away from yeah, home? Yeah. Or. You know, sh- you know, like I, o- I always, and and like I said, like, I still haven't found that, that right balance. Huh? Yeah, it's like a daily, yeah. it's like a daily self check. Oh, I think you're quite balanced. Huh? I think you're quite yeah, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> so you're quite I balanced, know. right? <laughs> yeah, it's quite balanced. Then I mean, you got to go through in three days away for Chinese New Year. That's a big deal, right? <laughs> Some people they just work all the way through. Yeah. yeah. And then what about you guys together? I mean, not 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 often. Also, you get father, uh, mm. husband, wife get to work together, right? Mm. How how do you keep it real? How do you keep it like, you know, tight? I always answer your turn. You answer? <laughs> <laughs> I always answer your turn first. <laughs> but you mean, you mean your friends always ask you these things? No, no, we, we, we don't. When we like do it's, interviews, it's we get this question. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the past, I've always... Mm. Okay, so a bit of background how we started working together, right? Yeah. So my wife was spending a lot of time at home, uh, and like about two years ago, she was like feeling, okay, you know, I'm thinking get the kids in and out, but what am I doing? Yeah. And, you know, is there is there things out there I could be achieving? Yeah. You know, and and then I asked her, okay, what is it that you want? Do you think makes you better? And actually, it was education. She was quite interested in education. She is still very interested in education, all right. But um, so we tried go down a path but it um, it didn't quite work out you know we, um, we wanted to start school on short and we didn't get a, a, the license for it yeah so um, then I said okay why don't you why don't you work with me right I will um, I'm, I'm building a colony I'll do I'll do I'll do all the all the boring parts running a business raising the money all this you you can do the fun parts that you know that you get to indulge in creative, in your creative mind to do all these things out, like designing the space, you know. So she, so she, and I, and I sense that she has a, she, my wife has has taste la. You got a real talent for some of your stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. really beautiful. Oh, yeah. thanks. I mean, if I seen the pictures, I would, uh, just pictures are amazing. But I've been to your place. Yeah, yeah the, um, it looks better. In yeah, the in, in person. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, man, it's damn nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she has taste la. and and how you can tell that someone has taste is when. When you can, when this person can put things together, that normally wouldn't go together, and somehow it just looks okay. Yeah. And I see it in my wife dressing all the time. Like sometimes, like. But it works. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. just works. You know what I mean? I thought he just bias. So, <laughs> <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah. So we started with that lah. You know, and when we first started with that, then um, it was, um, to be honest, it was it was challenging at first, because um, you know at at work I'm, 
you know, I'm like a leader, right? So yeah. I am the so called boss, lah, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, sometimes I say, oh, we do things this way and all that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you know, at home, she's the boss, right? Yeah. So you know, sometimes you know, and and we don't separate work from home. So at home, oh, you don't separate work from home. Yeah. Mm. Like, okay, so that that's that's interesting. Yeah. So at home, without some people, they want to divide, right? Yeah. So at home, we'll talk about work and all that one, okay, right? Okay. So sometimes. I when she when I talk to her, she doesn't know whether I'm talking to her as as a boss or as yes, a hus- yes. as husband, right? Because if if it's as a boss, then okay lah, you know, cool. She has to play, play second line, all right? Uh, not not necessarily play second line, but but understand that okay lah, this is the, you know what we need to do. Yeah. You know, if it's a if it's a husband, then I just need to shut the fuck up lah sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and listen lah, right? So so we, we struggled there at first, but I think now we've kind of like been able to to adjust quite well. Yeah. Yeah, so we, to be honest, we used to have, have, have fights and arguments in the early days. Yeah. But now it's we, we don't. Uh. It's kind of found a level, uh, right? Yeah. So just by doing it and doing it and doing it, then you've kind of found mm-hmm. an equilibrium, yeah. right? Yeah. I think because we're also very different people in the way that we work. So he's like, you know, just now he said, when he, he said that, you know, you just, what's the first step? You just do the first step, then it, it, after that it comes naturally. Mm-hmm. So he's like a doer. He's very good at getting things done and he's very punctual. Mm-hmm. He's he's very he's very good with deadlines and he's very good at details, but I'm not <laughs> opposite. Okay, so that's the yin and yang. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm like a drifter, I guess, and and I'm very chin chai one So like everything also, I'm like oh okay, and then I work best under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Like when the, the deadline is looming, like next week, you know, I'll be like yeah, I'm gonna get a lot of things <laughs> done. <laughs> so so that that was the difference between us, and then that the, the I think that that um. Yeah, that resulted in a lot of initial fights. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it kind of works out because you kind of both, both, you know, crazy idealistic and, and design oriented, but non meticulous and, and yeah, focused yeah. on deadlines, right? Yeah. It just doesn't work. You're kind mm. of two greens and two reds or whatever, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So he, he chases me and yeah. gets me to meet deadlines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you've said also before that managing people was one of your core mm. issues, right? Mm-hmm. When you're like, how has that changed? I mean, I learned that up to two years ago, I I didn't know how to manage people at all. Yeah. What I thought was management is not is not really really management. Yeah. And and I managed. What to were the mistakes you used to make? Um, you know, like in the past, I used to th- think I knew management because of experience. You know, I've I've kind of grown a company from this to this. You yeah. know, and then I manage teams, and then you know, and by that virtue, automatically I think of the management but yeah. actually no, actually I, I don't know shit about management you yeah. know and and how I how I've begun to realise that is when I started reading a lot of books uh, yeah. and I realised that management is really more of a science than an art right right so so in the in the past I used to be like I would used to when I manage teams it's like okay if, if shit is the fan it's a problem right then I'll go and solve the problem you know or or it's like about like setting KPIs for people and then okay make sure you don't hit KPIs yeah. and all this kind of stuff right yeah, yeah. and we realised that actually that's not management that's not it yeah and then we, we as entrepreneurs we, we take pride in that you know? like we tell people proudly that oh we're, we're firefighting or uh, there's a problem and we go solve it so we're hands on you know but when people now I realise that when I say that I'm firefighting or hands on it's actually it actually to people who know it means that I don't know how to manage lah. because if I know how to manage I don't need to be firefighting. Too firefight, yeah. You know, I need. Th- I'm not the firefighter. I am the the government that administers the firefighting service or something like yeah, that. You so know? you let them solve the problem at their yeah. level, uh. Yeah, and there's a lot of things. Like, I mean, it's, it's a very deep, deep um, subject. But I mean, there's a lot of books that you can read about that. So there's like a book. Um, the the there's a, one of the key books for this is um, it's called High Output Management by Andy High Grove. Output Management yeah. okay. by Andy Grover okay. it's um, the co-founder of Intel yeah, so he came up with this and I mean that reads like a textbook uh. it's, it's very dry trust yeah. me but it's it, it's very mind opening for me and um, other books are like one well, called Extreme Ownership it's by some Navy SEALs okay. um, Jocko Jocko Willing was it? sorry? Was oh, it yeah, 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 Jocko, yeah 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 he's a mad, mad guy crazy guy yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh, to, to uh, a lot of different um, book club you know so so now I've kind of learned and it's not just one thing, it's yeah. a whole series of things and it's not just one thing and one thing only, it's a series yeah. of consistent behaviour that, that you know come from the top all the way down. Now. So 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 what are okay, so, so what are some of those things? What are some of those, those elements that you say works mm. out to good good management? Right? Mm. I mean the easy ones are like to hire well, to to, to, to to deliver autonomy to them, 
uh, to give them the freedom to make decisions, but mm-hmm. not too much. Mm-hmm. What 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 works for you? Okay, so um, wow, it's so deep, man. Okay, let's just take one one aspect for it, right? For the longest time, people, I- people from the in in companies that I ran, right, never really truly understood what the goals of the people at the top were. Okay. Okay. Throughout the company, so okay. like people at the bottom won't, won't understand it. They know, okay, like, maybe make, make make more profits, uh, yeah. hit some targets, uh, But actually, what is the real goal? Yeah, what's the ethos, right? What, what is what's the real goal? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and and how we do it in colonies, we use OKRs, objective key results. Um, there's a book by John Dewar called Measure What Matters, lah. So essentially, it means you um, you set an objective and then you you establish certain key results that you pass on to the people below you to say, hey, let's say, uh, Chuang, I need to, hit, I need to one of my key results, one of my one of my objectives is I need to hit a hundred thousand in sales, right? Then I talk to you. You you you're in charge of the sales. You're the head of sales, right? And I'm like, what what do you think you need to achieve in order to hit that? And then you can come back and say, oh, I need I need to make sure I have two hundred leads and an average conversion of thirty five percent, or you know this kind of stuff. And then we can't track that. So it's certain things like that. It's also a lot of soft skills. So like, um, okay, so a, a CEO right isn't meant to to um, the the main CEO's job is to find the right people and to convince them to work to, with you towards a goal. Either one or the other, if you have one or the other, it's, it's useless. Yeah. Right, you need both of them, right? So, so I'll, I used to take pride in like getting hands on, you know, doing getting stuff on the ground. 30, yeah. Yeah, and, and I still do, I still do sometimes, right? But I do it for, for on, on, a, on a testing angle instead of literally doing it. So what managers need to do is that once you set up the whole chain of like assembly line, uh, and Negro calls it assembly line, where everything's running, right? Yeah. You're just supposed to go and test. Test yeah. the quality of each one yeah. every now and then, right? So you go down on the ground to meet clients every now and then just to test. But but the other times you spend, okay, hiring the right people. So there's a, there's a certain science to hiring people, right? And, and then convincing them to work with you, right? It's, for example, one-on-ones. Like one-on-ones is, is very, very important. It takes a lot of time. Um, I do one on ones. There are twenty over twenty of us plus in, in colony now, and I do one on ones with them every month, right? So I just sit down and all I'm doing is just listening. I'm listening, just asking questions, you know, find out how they feel and everything. And there's also a science to one on ones, yeah. right? So part of the science is that it's not just about hey, let's have a chat. And then my one on ones in the past, I used to be like the one talking about the company. Yeah. I ask you one two questions, then I'm talking all the time. Yeah, that that's that's not the right way to do that's it. That's not the way. Yeah. No. A one-on-one means the person who's, who's doing it at IE me needs to shut up for 90% of the time yeah. and talk for only 10% and listen yeah. to remain 90%, yeah. right? And, and, and the, there's a methodology to do it. So one of, the met- one of the things to do is that I need to use this opportunity to, to find out what your personal goals are because people are driven by self-interest, right? You, it's, it's naive to think to expect loyalty to the company or expect that you will, you, you know, you, you know your interests and the company interests are must be aligned yeah. no people have their own goals and it's okay maybe their goal is just to gain some experience and then move on to start their own business maybe that's the case right but what what one on ones it's one part of one on ones are meant to do is find out what your goals are and then align them with the company's goals to see for example right let's say your goal is to start a business of your own yeah right and then I ask okay what kind of business and you say maybe I'll start a cafe an F&B and I say okay so so you, your goal is to start a cafe. What do you think you need to know in order to start a cafe? Then you might say, um, I need to learn how to run the operations, you know, deal with vendors, take care of place. I need, you know, I need to know how to build a nice ambience in a cafe. It's not, not just about coffee, right, or food, but it's about how to build a nice atmosphere and all that. Then, then I ask you then, okay, do you think that you learned this from Colony in your current So then you, role? you, f- you feed him or her that, 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 that element so yes. that they can, they can be in, in, invested in, yes. in that process. Yes. And, and and once you get that right, man, people are just motivated to work all the way, uh, you know, because it's so aligned to to the goals. goals. Now, what if you and can't you know like, and you know they're gonna resign in two or three or whatever yeah, years time, but it's, it's okay, it's okay, because in the meantime they're giving you their time, right? Yeah, yeah. So what if they can't align? If you can't align, then right, as a company, we're wasting this person's time. You know, we we have wasting this person's time because yeah. this person could be doing better elsewhere. Yeah. 
you know. So and and it's okay if people leave because there there's um, there, there are two types of people. And none of this is original, by the way. None of this yeah. is for me. Uh. It's all from sure, books, sure. Okay? <laughs> right? I didn't invent any of this shit, right? So there's there's in every company there's rock stars and there are uh, superstars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so superstars. So, so rock stars and superstars. Yeah. So they're both stars. Yeah, yeah, they're both stars, <laughs> right? Rock stars, rock stars are like, rock stars are like, okay, superstars are people who are so outperformers lah. They just rock at it lah, yeah. right? And you will never be able to keep them for long or forever. But you just hope that in these three years, they rock at it. Oh, sorry, they're superstars. Yeah. They perform everything and then happily say bye to them and thank yeah, you and, yeah, and maintain yeah, relationships. Yeah. Rock stars are people who, are, are, they lay the foundation. They're, they're good at what they do. They, they, they're very stable. Right, they don't slack, but they they're not pushing constantly for promotions or anything like that. Yeah. Because maybe they come through a different phase in their life. I've had kids lah, I want to chill lah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and to be honest, rock stars can become superstars and vice versa. Yeah. They can. Yeah, right? it just depends on what stage of their lives they're at. Yeah, you know, but it's really it's really about understanding this right? and you know and and truly truly putting employees first lah. Yeah. You know, or basically. Anyone. I mean, if there's one thing I've learned about life in the past two years, right, is that, is that, if we, like life was, is a lot easier, right? If we treat everyone around us as if they were, well, like they are the most important people to us, because everybody has one thing in common. Everybody yeah. wants to feel important to somebody. Okay. So. <coughs> um, there's a bit of disbelief here, right? Because yeah. a lot of, in fact, every almost everybody says, "Oh, people are our number one asset." Yeah. Uh, you know, um, we put our staff first and all that. Ninety nine point point nine percent of the time, it's just bullshit. Yes. Right. Yeah, absolutely right. They 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 work them to the bone. They give them like single digit increments. There's no bonus to speak of. Their leave is like I don't know, fifteen <coughs> days a year or some shit like that, right? Mm. It's bullshit. Um, and the perks that they get is like it's, it's pathetic. So how, how do you really make your guys feel that they are the number one? Because you can never tell is, is people. Is it money? Is it uh, you, 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 if you want people to believe something, you cannot tell people. You have to show them. Right? So in, in Colony, you're absolutely right. Every company says we put people first. 95% of them is all bullshit because they don't really put so people first. So not 99 first. but 95. 95% 95 of them yeah. is like freaking bullshit. Lah, yeah. Right? You know? So how okay so how do how do we do it right so we have a lot of avenues right number one in which we we solicit feedback from the team anonymously and non-anonymously so whether it's town halls we know you know we do a, a every quarter we do a net promoter score survey are you familiar with net promoter score is this score like, between a negative 100 to a positive 100 okay right and it's calculated based on the aggregate score of one question how likely are you to refer colony to a friend I see. A lot of Fortune okay. 500 companies use cool. this, right? I mean, that, that's deep, that's fraudulent, man. Yeah, so one, 1 to 6 means you, it's a negative score. Yeah. 7 to 8 is passive. 9 and 10 means you've got promoter. Okay. Right, that's a positive score. Right, so if you hit anywhere in positive, you're good. Like, if you, Apple or Disney is like plus 40, plus 50. Like, right? Wow, but, okay. Yeah, it's, okay. it's pretty cool, right? Plus, that's like world class. Like. Um, telcos and banks, every single telco and bank in Malaysia is like negative single digits. Forget it. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, they, they, they're kind of that, like, right? So, we do that for our customers, uh, for our for our guests and colony, right? And I mean, it's good lah. It's like plus, plus sixty uh, plus fifty now. I mean, our customers are, they, they they really like it like, And for us, that's a that's a leading indicator of future retention. Yeah. Like how much of our customers really love our product. Yeah. Right. So that that's a leading indicator. But we also do that for employees, where they can rate us. Now, the first time we did that survey. First quarter of last, uh, sorry, of 2018. 18, 18. First quarter of 2018, right? Our score, our employees rated us, right? Negative 44. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it was freaking disaster. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's negative 44. And you know what? It took me as a shock, right? Because why? When I talk to everybody, everyone seems happy. At work, yeah. they laugh at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But when you put, when you really, really dig out the truth from people, right? This is what it was. That's what inspired me to start reading all these books. Was that I realized that oh shit man yeah yeah better sort it out right I don't know what the hell I'm doing you know and and I've I've learned that and then and now it's like plus forty five forty six people are very happy lah so yeah. what we do anyway the survey is that we, we get a score then we we find out like exactly what the feedback are and then we we share it openly with everyone yeah 
whether it can be not enough salary, not enough leave, uh, I think I'm underpaid, whatever feedback, right? Then we address it one by one. We tell people right. what we can address, what we cannot address, everything like that, you know? Okay. We, for example, we share, we share our financial, financial results every month to the whole team, every single cent. The whole team knows how much I'm being paid down to the dollar, right? Um, we, you know, like, we, oh, we have every quarter. Okay, so this is quite, this is quite long. <laughs> <laughs> to, to even tell you this right there's, there's this like there's this like Maslow pyramid needs that we follow lah, on what, what it takes to make people happy in a company yeah right so the base in Maslow remember is physiological needs Maslow yeah, yeah. Okay. so it's, it's pay okay. to, to an employee that's pay you, if you if you don't get enough pay you cannot be happy at this job no matter right. what so that's a baseline assumption baseline right okay. so what we do for that right once we found out that um, that's, that's a key part right the minimum pay in colony is 3,000 ringgit no matter how junior you are no, nobody else gets paid less than 3000 right. Yeah. yeah, it's better than UBI. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, sure. a minimum. <laughs> la. You know my UBI, right? Universal Ooh. basic income. Yeah, okay. oh, so yeah. Yeah. then a uh, bright above that is, is security. Yeah. Right? So people need to feel safe. Job security. At work. Uh, job security, can't feel the company shutting down, otherwise yeah, you can't be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you need to feel safe at work. So you can't, yeah. you can't, feel, like you, you can't feel like you are going to fall victim to politics at work. You don't know your boss is going to yeah, stab you in the or, back. Or sniping, back, back, back. Yeah, yeah. Sexual, harassment. sexual harassment. Sexual you know. harassment. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't <laughs> sleep, right? Yeah. Then right above that is social belonging. Do you, do you get along with people and everything, right? Then the fourth one is um, self-esteem. You want to feel that you... You, 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 you want to feel proud of the, of the things you do. Yeah. That's where the acknowledgement comes. Yeah. You know, celebrating small wins, all the kind of yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then the top is self-actualization. Okay, right. becoming who you, fulfilling your potential. Yeah, who you, that you feel that this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. This is really what I'm born to do and nothing else. Once you get that right, you're very, Once very you happy. Once you 80% of that for four or five things, yeah. you, you're sorted, you're going to get a rock yeah. star. So we split it into that, that framework, right? Yeah. And everyone is very clear on what we're doing for each one, right? And if any request comes in, we see where it falls into the five, right? So for example, the self-actualization, how do we do it? Every quarter, right, we bring the whole team, we shut out the whole company on a weekday, by the way, not weekends, uh, on weekdays, right? Because, in, and it's disruptive because we have offices, right, that yeah. we need to open, right? Yeah. But we will just close the receptions and then we say, guys, because we want to do it on weekday because we don't want to take your weekend time yeah. because we value your time as yeah, employees yeah. of the company, yeah, yeah. okay? And we would go to a different company each quarter to learn from the entrepreneur behind it about their industry and about their business and their journey. Right, so Fantastic. first quarter last year we did it with uh, T Life Brian Liu. Okay. So he shared his whole story yeah. and with the cha time thing and all that la. Then second quarter we did with Dolly Tim Sum, okay. like Ming la. Third quarter quarter we did with uh, Faith. Fourth quarter we did yeah. with uh, Container Hotel in okay, TIA too. Cool, cool. So you learn of all these different industries, right? And it gives them perspective. Like you never you, if you will never like wonder oh what's it like if I went to another industry, because yeah. you kind of know. And of course there's a risk la. People say. There's a risk where you lose the guy. You lose the guy. Yeah. I say, oh shit! I come to T Life. This is really what I want to do. If that's the case, then go, yeah. because we're employees first, ma. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. There's a lot of very deep things into into what we do, la, as a company, and and for us, it's especially necessary because colony, right? It's not about community or stuff like that. You know, yeah. like other companies. Cool we're about hospitality, what. Right? And in order to have good hospitality, right, you need to have very, very happy people. Yeah, because otherwise the smile they put on is fake. Yeah. As <laughs> simple as that, although small. Yeah. Or, or, you know, they can't, or they don't go out of the way for you, or, you know, you can't. So, so I mean, this is what I've learned, like, and this is all this recent, like, in the past like year and a half, that I've actually learned. Like. So there's one thing that drives you every day, yeah. right? What is it? Just... just and I mean, I've, I've kind of said this. I've kind of said, I mean, okay, this life changing thing for me, right? Is that, is, is that I am unimportant. Like, I'm, I'm nobody, really. And, and everybody else is somebody. And, and, can, and it really changes everything. Because, for example, even my relationship with my wife, I used to be like, hey, if I go on a weekend, right? And then I want to come home at four o'clock so I can play my games or whatever shit, right? And then I'm out with my in laws, right? and the lunch drags on and I yeah. come back late, right? I get frustrated. Like, Fuck, what about my me time? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or when I follow her shopping or whatever. Now, bro, it's not no problem. Man. Yeah. I'm unimportant. <coughs> you know, like, like I'm here, I'm here with you today, right? Because I'm unimportant. 
you are important and this is important to you so let's do this podcast do you understand and and I find that that's pretty revolutionary man kind of changes how you approach life and work and career and everything yeah but it's not it's not completely altruistic you know because right when you make someone else feel important right it comes back it comes back right yeah. whether it's team whether it's our investors yeah. whether it's our customers everyone yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know and and I, I feel a lot happier like, personally like. yeah yeah. yeah, the more you give, the more you get. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah, I, do, I don't... Of course, we try not to expect that, right? Yeah. But... Yeah. yeah. So if there's one thing, it's that, you know. Realize that I'm a nobody um, and and live life like everybody else is a somebody. What's your parting shot, Audrey? What's the one thing that you want to leave people <coughs> as a mother, as a, know, a child, daughter, as a wife, so general, as an entrepreneur you yourself, ask even as an influencer yourself, <laughs> is there something? <laughs> I mean, is there? I guess everybody's got this anchor to them, right? What grounds you? What drives you forward? What drives me? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm. To be honest, I'm not a very driven person. Yeah, yeah. But every day when I wake up, I always find something to look forward to in in the day. The positivity. Yeah, like yeah. it can even be as simple as like when I'm driving your kids to school. Yeah. Then I know like oh, you drive okay, your own kids to school. I drive, I drive no, no driver school. things like that. No um, most of the time, I I take because yeah. he has a lot of meetings, so I rather he take the driver. So he goes in and out. So, and and school is only like half a day. So yeah. So it's like as, as simple as like you know, or thinking of what songs should I listen to in the car <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah, okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. You're in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, man. Well, guys, thanks for coming. A huge privilege again. I mean, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I think it'd be a huge influence and a um, huge inspiration to people who are watching. So, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah.